Alright guys, so I'm with Paul Martin. He is a master craftsman here at Gerstner and & Sons and he's the one that is going to be overlooking and doing this full restoration on my Gerstner tool chest. So Paul, good to meet you. Good to meet you Adam. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's wonderful to meet you. Thanks and so much for coming by. It's, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, seeing your work here. This is just amazing. Yeah, isn't it great? Isn't it great? It, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Being in the original location, seeing all your tools, everything, it's just a wonderful place. That's all right. That's yeah. All right. yeah. So you feel like talking to the viewers and telling them about how you're going to handle the restoration on this box? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I do the restorations here. And um, the one thing about you understand here is it's not really the box. It's not really the, the, the chest. This is about people. It's about love, thanks, and respect. That's right. We want to think about the person that used this box. This was a working box. The guy who used this went in every day. It was from 1965. He went in. He did his job. I'm not really sure what kind of shop he was at. Perhaps it was a machine shop or perhaps an automotive shop. But it, you can tell this is a, he had his tools in here. There's a lot of grease all over it. It's, it was well worked. What we want to do is bring it back to some sort of a, of, a, of a restored condition. But we don't want to lose that guy. That guy was here. Yeah. And we want to maintain some of that. We want to recognize him. And we want to respect the years that he put into this box. Yeah. So that's our, to start with, there really isn't any formula for any of this thing. Every one of them is individual. So we start okay. off by saying, here on a quote sheet, people will send them in. Uh, in your case, you did a video of it. That's right. interesting. Everybody has a different way of doing it. Right. Okay, so you send this over and you say, okay, let's, let's look at it and see what has to be done. And then we come up with some options. Uh, in, in, in this case, you're looking for the full restoration. And what we do is figure out how much time would be involved in that. And then the, the people in the office will quote a time. Okay. Also, then we have a lot of questions. Um, I made up a quote and I sent that to them and then they sent me, the office sent me a list of the things that you wanted done. And what I was thinking that we could do is start off on that list and then I'll go through each one of those things and explain to you what, what all is going to happen there. Okay, sounds good. Um, you start off, it says strip and sand the drawer front, strip and sand and hold the whole chest. Yeah. That means that we're going to actually sand off all of the existing finish put in a new stain and refinish it. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it's, it's warranted, it's a good idea. Uh, sometimes the finish is not in especially bad condition and we can just clean it. Okay. Uh, sometimes folks like the, the real rustic kind of look to it, the real beat up kind of look, and all they want to do is just clean it off, perhaps polish it. Yeah. Uh, in, in this case, we're gonna go right down. So then I'll look at it and I'll say, well, what kind of condition is that? is that surface. One of the things that we look for in particular, i show you here in the back, one of the things we look for is the condition of the veneers in the back and along the tops here. Sometimes when a box gets up against a wall, it collects a lot of moisture here. Sometimes if it gets caught in a flood or a fire or something like that, these are going to be problems with some of the veneers. These pieces in the back and the top are, are veneer plywoods. The pieces on the sides are the solid oak. Okay. And this, by the way, this is white oak. It's not red oak. Okay. White oak is used as a quarter sawn white oak. Okay. And the reason that it's used is this is furniture grade oak. It's not just regular stuff. This is quarter sawn, and that's those marks there. You can see that's the that's part of the grain. They're called rays, and that that's 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 the beauty of the oak. And when you look at a piece of fine furniture, you'll see that in the white oak. Yeah. So we look at that. If if any of that needs to be repaired, yes, we'll repair it. Uh, glue it down, re-glue it, set it up, sand it out so that it looks like it's new. Yeah. And then uh, the next thing here, uh, refit the drawers to allow smooth operation. Now it's been around for 50 years. In it will swell, it will contract. Right. Uh, sometimes things won't work the way they were and we want to double check that and make sure that works. In this particular case, I noticed that this drawer was hanging up. 
Not sure why that is. I think it has something to do with across the back here, maybe along the top here, something along here. And the other thing that can happen is in a box, these partitions can drop down a little bit. Doesn't that what you're talking about? Is that because people are putting too much weight in a box sometimes? No. Okay. No, they're I, okay. they're made to they're made to take a they're made to work. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of age. Okay. Uh, sometimes the glues will dry out a little bit. They might drop down. Um, it, it's used, and it's, it's, this, you know, in in many ways, you can say, well, that's not especially bad if that's the only problem. If you just get a little bit of rub after 50 years, that's no big deal. <laughs> so okay. we'll take care of that. Make sure that that works. Um, also, you had mentioned this one here. Yeah, this, this is. This drawer here is the one that was. This uh, is broken. Yeah, it was falling apart there. And, yeah. um, you know. To be honest, uh, anybody they can, they can get a shot of that. This is the one that's yeah. coming apart there on the side. Let me let me just get to one, one of these here. See now, to be honest, anybody can glue this back together. That's really no big deal. Right. And you probably should if you if you have a Gerson box and 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 if a piece like this falls off after 50 years, sure, that's a good idea to go up and glue it back. One of the things that we have to we can offer here is that we do as part of the factory restoration we can use the same tools that were used to build the box to restore it. That's in amazing. this in this case here this is a big old clamp yeah you know this old style clamp made from long island comes from long island city in new york wow you know so we open that up we we'll yeah. put it on clamp it up yeah. and tighten it that way yeah that's that's just you know that's the kind of thing that you're getting here at a factory restoration that's amazing. That, that's the big deal. Using the original tools to restore the box that yes. was created over 50 years ago. That's right. This box has come home. Yeah. These walls have seen this box before. Yeah. So when we put that, there's a clamp over there that's used to put them together that way. Uh, I can tell you that a lot of these clamps were used in order to put the drawers together. Um, the mirror will be set. That We have the template over this. Is the template over that way will actually put here, and that'll tell where to put the mirror. So we'll, re okay. we'll take this mirror off, put new felt in, and then we'll use that same template to reset the mirror. Okay. It's fun. Nice. Yeah, you know, it could be. You know, you obviously you could put the mirror in there. That's really no big deal. Yeah. But the fun, the fun part is that it's reset exactly this. And believe it, I have actually had some where I go to put the nail in, and the nail is in the same spot. Wow. <laughs> and so, so you're using like the same template. Exactly the, the same, same template. The wow. same template. Wow, that's and amazing. You, yeah, it's it's just you know it's no big deal. It's just a it's a it's a piece it's a piece yeah. of wood. It's nice, but but it, it is it's fun. You know, yeah. it's a, that's part of part of it. So right. it it again we we want to maintain the integrity. We want to maintain the authenticity. We want to show respect for the guy who had this and for the people who are who own them now. See, because a lot of these, they'll go into a living room. They'll go into a bedroom. Somebody says, I want to use it for, to put into, uh, use it as a jewelry box, and it will go in on top of a, a dresser. Uh, or they'll put it into in the living room and say, this is this was grandpa's tool chest. We remember grandpa's gone now, mm -hmm. but we remember him, yeah. and the days that he put in to feed the family. Yeah, you know, they of, make great heirloom pieces for the family. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So then we go down here, we're, we're going to refit the drawers, make sure that they work out. Ah, okay, now we go on to the, to the story of the hardware. Yeah. This is kind of an interesting thing. In the world of coins, you never clean the coin. You just, you have the coin and it has been circulated and that much wear and that's it, so you don't touch it. On the other hand, if you bought a new car last week, and something on that car broke, you would want a new piece right away. You wouldn't want to mess around with it. So th those are the extremes. Now, there's a, that's a continuum. And there's a, there are different ways you can think about this. You might say, this guy had this box, and he used this box, and he used these clips, and he used this lock, and that's what we want to maintain. That's what we want to keep. All right, fine. Yeah. That's part of the discussion that we yeah. have. Um, another thing would be, well, we want to upgrade it. We want to put we want to put new hardware because we're going to put it into a living room or put it into a bedroom. We want to make it sure that it looks nice and, and 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 it will indeed look nicer with with that hardware. Now, one of the things that we can offer here in a factory restoration is we can say, 
here is new hardware yeah. with our no, with our name on it installed at the factory, and that counts towards the authenticity. Right. Um, them to say no, no, I want to keep the original stuff. Fine, yeah. we can do that, or yeah. we can add. We used to do a thing where we replated the original hardware, but you can, you know more about this than I do. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff is extremely expensive. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, I think that's actually putting a little too fine a point on it. Okay. It can be done, but you know, you really wonder when you get into like hundreds and hundreds of dollars to yeah. replate, that you say, well, you know, does, is it really that important? Especially when you have, so now what I did here is I took yours, yeah, so I, I this is yours. You know, I I did a little video of this showing my viewers, uh -huh. and I had some people uh, mention that I should reuse the original hardware on this restoration, but the option is obviously that you can replace the hardware as an option with new Gerstner hardware, or as you're speaking, uh, repolish these and reuse the original hardware. Yes. Yes, and that's the sort of thing that makes it individual. Yeah. You tell me, and I'll go either way with it. Yeah. Um, now, what I did is I was like, the obvious question is, what's it going to look like? Yeah. So what I did is I took a few pieces off the chest, and I said, let me let me do them up so you get an idea of what it would be like, and then I'll, you could compare them to the new one. Okay. So this was a corner I took off here. This was the original corner here. I took this corner off, and I brought it to the wire wheel. We have a Sonic cleaner, but frankly, is there a little bit more than, than the Sonic? We've tried the Sonic cleaner, but it really takes a wire brush with, with oil. And you can see here, this is, this is the piece with the wire brush and oil, and you would compare that to a new piece. This is the new one. So, yes, this is the original. But understand, it doesn't have the finish. It doesn't have the it doesn't have the uh, the shine to it. Also, uh, and again, you know more about this than I do. It's like this was not coated, so that you have to be careful with that. You have to keep it polished, mm -hmm. and you might have to worry about some rust showing up because then this is going to hold up a little better. Yeah. Here is this catch that came from that spot right there. Yeah. This is what it looked like originally, and this is the wire brush, and then you would compare that to the new one. Now, understand this is indeed nickel-plated brass with the Gerstner on it. Okay. So it's not exactly stuff that you might pick up at the hardware store. Right. I mean, it's good. <laughs> you know, this, it this is authentic. Is, this is only available through Gerstner and Sons. That's correct. Company. Yeah, yeah. This is you yeah. It's proprietary. Yeah. Sure enough. Proprietary yeah. parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a Gerstner catch, so. and that will go on there like that. So I believe, to, just to keep the parts original, I think I'm going to opt to just have you polish all the parts and we're just going to keep all of the original hardware on, on the box. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to do the wire brush. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yep. fine. Okay. Yep. And then another good point to make, you know, just for viewers watching that, you know, maybe, maybe you find a, a Gerstner box that's missing hardware, that, you know, this is a good time. You know, you can you can call Gerstner and you can purchase these kits, you know, so that you have replacement parts for these boxes if, if you need them. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's the, right. The pulls, you know, the drawer pulls, the, the locks, the latches, everything. So this was, this one I took off of this drawer here and I part, polished it out and that's what it'll look like there when it goes back on. Yep. So we'll have a new finish. This, we'll, we'll put the... We'll put the current stain on the oak, okay. and that will indeed be a little, a little bit darker than our production models now because the wood is darker. Okay. So it'll be a little lighter than this, but a little bit darker than regular production. Yeah. Just, just to give you an idea. But okay. indeed, it'll all, it'll all match. I'm sure it's all going to look beautiful, though. Yeah. By the way, when I go to replace it, another thing I noticed here. When I go to fix this drawer and fix it up, there's a big crack here. I don't know how that happened, but that's going to be fixed there. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. So that was, that and that's was, in the that's in the cover here of the. Yeah, that's in this that's yeah. in this place. This yeah. is the this is the the lid. They call this the front lid. Okay, and I noticed it was tight here. Yes. So it's tight there, and then this lock is missing as well. Uh huh. That, so yeah. So that, this will be these will be fixed. Right. That one's a little tight, but. 
There's a, just a little snug here, so that should that should work a little bit better. Yeah. So we'll replace that. We'll make sure that's working better. Better. Okay. We'll we'll uh, we'll tighten up that that little crack there. Okay. okay. All right. So that's that. Um, uh, we're going to re put new felt yeah. on it now. Way back when, we would these these felts. A lot of them will come out. Mm -hmm. We use this because with like machinist tools, let me get something right here. You want to have you want to have a nice felt bottom. You, you put your tools in there, and then you working day by day, you might toss them in there. You don't want to take a tool, and toss it onto the metal. Yeah. So it's just it just it dents it up. It's not nice for the tool. So there's a but every once in a while, the guys would want to replace the felt. You know, you'd have a box, you'd be out there for working for five, ten years, and you say, you know what, it's time for new felt, because obviously it gets pretty worn out. Yeah. You can see this. In they get, they get worn and dirty, and a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of oil stains in there, and, and metal chips. So we use um, a water-soluble hide glue for that reason. Okay. So that way we can take them out. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I start working on this chest, now this one pulls out pretty easily, so we'll just take that out and throw it away. Yeah. A lot of times here they're, they're a little bit more sticky when they go on to the, on to the, to the, to the, uh, to the wood. So okay. the way to get them off, and I believe there's some sort of a video about that, is they, they uh, will actually so just brush water on it, let that water soak in, and that'll break down the glue. Okay. And that, that, that's how that's done. So the first thing I'll do is I'll brush the glue and make sure that those, those come out. Then I'll start working on taking the box apart. Okay. We actually take all of the hardware off. Okay. And in this case, we'll wire brush it. And then uh, do, the, do the refinish. And then we'll reinstall all of that. Okay. Uh, reinstall all that, all that hardware. So this will be done. This will be done. So okay. a lot of times... Now, we, I'll probably replace this with a green felt, and you said that the green felt, but we do offer um, like a black felt or mm -hmm. a red or yeah. a brown. Sometimes when people are using it for a jewelry box or for uh, display purposes, say, say somebody wants to use it for wristwatches, mm -hmm. uh, they might want a different color. Yeah. Now is a good time to change the color. Right. You know? I, I personally like the classic green for the machinist box. Mm -hmm. I do like the red and black sounds great too, but just uh, I, li I like the classic green mm -hmm. for the machinist tools anyway. That's right. That, well, certainly that, and that, but that's one of the things we want we to offer as an option. Uh, that's you know, cool. Now's the time, you know. And it, can can uh, can people order felt kits for their boxes? Yes. Okay. Yes. There's actually a, a thing. I think. What do they say? They give them so many yards. You call in the, the size of the box okay. that you have, and then, then you call it. Now, you do have to cut it yourself. Okay, you, you get have a, to cut it. Okay. You get a roll of it. Yeah. Um, right. So, you know, you'd have to cut it so that it fits in there, and then you glue yeah. it in yourself. Okay. But, uh, yes, there is such a thing as, as yeah. a felt. And it is a little bit different. It's a starched felt, so mm -hmm. it lays flat, which is different from a regular, which is regular felt that you might pick up at the, at the fabric store. It's got kind of a wave to it. It's not as stiff. Okay. So this stuff is nice starch felt. You can go in there nice and flat, and you, just, you cut it, and glue it in there like that. All right. So that's felt. Um, then uh, yes, yeah, so then we do a, a final uh, final inspection, make sure that it's working right, uh, replace this kind of thing. And that that's basically it. I'm looking at this this job would probably take me two days. Okay. There, if I was really working fast, I could probably start it and get it done inside of a day and a half. But I don't really like to do it that way. I like to kind of take a visit. And the other part of it is I never really know what I'm going to run into. Yeah. Once I take this apart, I find out, well, this, this hung up or this is broken and this needs to be replaced. Uh, I want to get to, that, to the spot where uh, I don't want to rush through it. So I figure this will probably be two days. Right. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. Sure, it's yeah. going to be great. I, yeah. I love it. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun to work on this one because it's in pretty good shape, really. Some yeah. of them that come in that that really beat up can, and whatnot. You have to reconstruct things. I can imagine. I've I've seen some rough ones out there. This was a top of a box that had to be replaced. So. You can see the veneer is falling off, the handle is oh, yeah. over there. Now, this, this particular yeah. one doesn't have a handle. Yeah. But uh, what I had to do in this case was actually take that out 
take these pieces off, remanufacture this piece in the middle, and then clamp it all back together. Wow. And keep it all keep it all square so that the whole thing works. Yeah. Right. And yeah. what's cool about that is we got, I did this with the same tools that we used to put it together in the first place. That's uh, again amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Isn't that fun? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you uh, going over the restoration process uh, with me and all of the viewers out there on what it takes to do a, a restoration here at Gerstner. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing the finished product there. And uh, maybe you guys will be able to get a few pictures, uh, maybe even a little video of the process to be able to share. And uh, I'll definitely uh, be sharing once, once it's finished there in the shop. And I uh, can't wait to actually get it and, and put it to use. Great. So, uh, I'm going to start working on it now. Right. I understand that you're going to go off on a tour of the shop. Yes. Maybe when you finish with the tour, you swing back and you'll see how far it is. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah. Right. We'll come back by and say hello and uh, see what you've done on the box. Great. All okay. right. Appreciate see you in a bit. You. Okay. Thank you. How we doing, Paul? Back, huh? Yeah, I'm back. Nice. <laughs> Great. We, well, here it is. We got to do the shop tour and see how all of the wonderful Gerstner chests are created. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how's the <laughs> how's the restoration process it's going? It's going great. It's going great. This is um, here. Here's the box. Okay. We're breaking it down into parts. Are we getting it all apart? Here are the rivets coming out now. Okay. You finding any any hidden secrets in there? Or anything that you weren't aware of? Um, one thing is save this. I usually save little bits of memorabilia. Yeah, the, yeah, the decimal equivalent chart. Yeah, because yeah, okay. sometimes they have little, you know, advertising. Sometimes there are dates on them yeah. and whatnot, and uh, I, I'll just include that in the pieces. I don't, I don't throw yeah. that away. Okay. Here are the. Is it, do you have the key to the lock? I do not. Okay, so we'll have to see. There's a um, a, a note here, a number and I'll see if they can come up with a key for you. Okay. There was one thing I did want to um, mention is that I do want to preserve the original notes down in there uh -huh. from the original owner. Yep. I just want to make sure that yeah. we don't... I'm a, I only work up to about here. Okay. I leave, I leave all that alone, absolutely. Yeah. That and also all the numbers in the back. Okay. Oh, I wanted to ask you about that. Can you explain what these numbers represent? To, yes, the, to the that, viewers here that's the that's the position of the drawer this would be uh, for box number 420 position number two so this is telling us that this this is box number 420 here okay yeah there's 420 see that and this is the second position drawer okay so what happens is they'll fit they fit the drawers and then they all go off in different spots. Okay. The, the boxes go one spot, the drawers go in another spot, the top lids go in another, the front lids go, they all go different boxes. They're processed and finished and whatnot. Then, then at the end, they reassemble it all. So they know that this is gonna go to box number 420 in the second position, which would be here. Okay. And they're counted down this way. Okay, all right. That's what I was thinking was going on there, but I wasn't fully aware, so I wanted to I wanted to verify that by asking. And we always say that another another thing that you can find is that guys will open the drawers this way, so a lot of times you'll find fingerprints along here. Yes. Yep. That's kind of fun. You just see. Oh see yeah. The guys' fingerprints here. Yeah. A lot of lot of greasy fingerprints over the years. Yeah. I'm getting you know, on that. I don't, I don't take those away. I leave those there. I might, if anything, I might finish around here, but mostly I just clean it and I leave this part here. Yeah. Cool. Because that's where the guy was. One thing I did find is there's a, some. This is there's a separation here. Okay. And uh, that's going to bring this whole thing down here. That's why this was rubbing against that top drawer. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's an easy fix. I mean, just get in under here, push it up. Yeah. Uh, and that's that, that's fixed. And then when the when the new felt goes on, I didn't really see that until I took the old felt out, and then that showed up pretty obviously. Okay. Well, we're really looking forward to seeing the uh, the finished restoration. Sure. Sure. So thanks a lot for uh, see some of the old tools and uh, yeah, it's been great. In the shop. Yeah, we got the full tour. Got to. 
got to see the whole shop and they took me around. We even got to see the uh, the old tool and die shop, and the old oh, machine yeah. shop. Sure. Got to see that, sure. the old machinery, the old punch presses, uh, yeah. everything, the, the entire process from raw stock to uh, finish. I bet you yeah. really like that with kind of the evolution of machine yeah. tools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it over, was over the great. century. <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been fabulous. Great. It's been, great. been really enjoyed it. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
exciting day in the shop here, guys. I just got my crate back from Gerstner and Sons up in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, Master Craftsman Paul Martin has completed the restoration on my Gerstner tool chest, and they've sent it back to me. I have not seen what the completed box looks like, so I am ready to get it uncrated here and let you see what it looks like, and I'm ready to check it out for myself. So let's get this thing unboxed. So Paul told me that I win the award for, for uh, best crating job of uh, all the boxes that he has received for people that sent these uh, chests back to them. I definitely wanted to make sure that this thing was protected and I'm glad that I did because when I met the uh, UPS guy out there at the road, you can see that it's kind of busted open right here on this side and the handle's coming off. When I met the UPS guy at his truck, because I seen him pull up, he was actually rolling this thing in for in out from the back of his truck up to the front cab to meet me. And, uh, you know, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, you know, I'm doing the, uh, I'm rolling my eyes at him, like, really? So I'm glad that I padded it well, crated it well. So I'm hoping that we've got a well protected chest inside here. up good sure is looking good yep and get some of this padding out from the side here it is just hung up in there go first look man look at that as we had mentioned in the previous video when we were talking to uh, Mr. Paul, this is all the original hardware on this. So all he did was just um, wire brush those things, all, you know, all the corners, even the screws. They're all original. All he did was just clean them up and uh, we just reused them. The handles, everything, it's all original. All, all replaceable components, though, if you need these parts, you can definitely buy these from Gerstner. And the true Gerstner will have... Gerstner, Dayton, Ohio there on all the parts, so. Look at that. Man, look at that. Got us a new mirror right there. We even got a, uh, we even got a key to the lock. How about that? That is cool. Very nice. There's the drawers. Right. How nice. So we had one of these that was damaged. I believe it was, uh, I believe it was this one. We had the damage. It was either this one or the one underneath that. Might have been this one right here. I believe it was this this corner right here, this joint that was damaged. I love the finish on this box, man. It looks beautiful. Very nice. 
All the pulls are original, uh, done the same way. They're just polished up. Very nice. And then we, uh, we made sure that we maintained our, our uh, notes that were handwritten down here in the bottom as well. There's the original stamp and then the, uh, the note written from R.E. Clapper, 1965, the original owner of, of the box. So we just wanted to make sure that we preserve this history in the box, which, which they do anyway. So that's really cool. Really, really nice. Paul's done a nice job on this restoration. This was in a this decimal chart here was was in the lid, so he saved that for me. I can just keep that with the box there. Now I was just going to check out the rest of the drawers here, and I, I picked the green felt just to kind of make it, you know, keep the original coloring. You can pick whatever color felt that you want. They have several colors to pick from. So I love it. It's beautiful. We got the original uh, logo there, the emblem that they put on the drawer that's maintained and left on there. It looks really good. I'm real happy with it. Beautiful job. I'm real happy with the way this restoration turned out on this uh, tool chest. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. And Paul did a great job. He is definitely a great craftsman, a, a master craftsman with what he does. And I, I think he did an awesome job, you know, explaining the uh, the process of, you know, how to restore a box properly and the, you know, the, the things that you want to do and then some of the things that you don't want to do to these to these old uh, Gerstner tool chests, you know, leaving some of the things original and, and um, you know, maybe some of the things that you do want to replace in it, you know, like these hardware pieces right there. I took this cue of leaving those kind of, based off some of the views that, or uh, some of the viewers had suggested not replacing those and leaving them original. So, you know, after hearing from a bunch of folks there, I decided to just leave these, leave these on there or leave the original hardware pieces on there and uh, just roll with them because these seem to be a pretty sought after uh, item for uh, Gerstner tool chest restoration. So uh, I didn't have them coated. That's another option. You could, uh, you could take these pieces and have them, you know, nickel coated if you wanted to, to, uh, to preserve them but it, it adds to the cost and it is pretty expensive to go that route so we just opted to uh, wire brush them and polish them out and I shouldn't have any problems with my climate controlled shop here with any kind of rusting issues but there's things that you can do to preserve that metal there as well you can put some things on there uh, to help protect that but the uh, the finish of the wood just looks gorgeous I I'm real happy with it it just looks very pretty. I love the finish of it. And all of the drawers now are fitting properly. The, uh, the lid, the lid is, is fitting into the box just like it's supposed to be. You know, Paul fixed that problem where we had, it was separating there. And we had some issues up here at the top of the box that he had to address. So, you know, he, he did what he, what he does as a craftsman. And he restored the box back to a, uh, uh, good looking and good functioning just like it's supposed to be and it just it's beautiful I love it such a wonderful job there and I don't know if we had mentioned in the uh, previous videos I can't remember now but you know he's got he's got a fixture where this uh, triangular you know mirror goes and it's the original fixture the tool that they use that they put in the top of this lid here that sets this in the right location and the one that he used to put this new mirror in there is the one that they used back whenever this box was originally made back in 65 they're still using that same tool it's just amazing the uh, heritage of that company and the tools that they still use there just absolutely amazing I want to give a big thanks to Scott Campbell, the president of Gerstner & Sons, for offering up this really cool restoration on my Gerstner tool chest right here, and also uh, for collaborating with me and allowing me to come up to the shop there and you know, providing the shop tour so that I could share that with all of my viewers. I just thought that was totally cool 
that I could come up into their shop and film it and share it with everyone there on the channel. And of course, this beautiful restoration, it was just really, really nice of uh, Scott to uh, offer that up. So thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. That was great of you. And uh, Paul, uh, Paul Burgess, it's been great working with you. You know, I've been, I've been uh, communicating with Paul uh, on the, you know, getting up there and doing the shop tour and uh, just the communication back and forth. Paul's been great to work with. And then uh, Paul Martin, the master craftsman that was uh, overseeing the restoration of this tool chest. Uh, he did a fantastic job of this restoration and I loved sitting there and having conversations with him about, you know, what it takes to do the restoration of these tool chests and the history of that company. It's just absolutely amazing. You know, they've been there since 1906, still have some of the original machines and tooling in that place that they still use today. And looking around and seeing the walls in that place and just knowing the history of that building and what it has, what it has went through and all the chests that it has made, it really is a fantastic company. They really know their stuff. They build a fine product. These tool chests are top, top of their class. So I really hope that if you consider buying a wooden tool chest that you will consider a Gerstner and it is something that you will cherish for the rest of your life. It is an heirloom item. You know, if you buy one of these, it is something that you can pass down to your family, to your children, to your grandchildren. It'll be in your family for the rest of your life. You know, and if you have one of these types of tool chests, maybe you buy one used like I did, you know, and you want a little bit of help with your restoration, Call up Gerstner. They'll be willing to help you out with your restoration as well. They got all the parts that you need, or if you need somebody to help you do the restoration like I did, they'll be sure to help you out. They do a great job, and I just love them. Fantastic company. What, what else can I say about them? Thank you very much, Gerstner. I really appreciate the hospitality that you have shown me and my viewers. Really appreciate it. I hope everybody's enjoyed the video, and thanks again, Paul, for the awesome restoration on this tool chest. You did a great job.